Hello everyone, welcome to the video. So today we're going to be setting up an STM32 development board with the Zephyr IDE for Visual Studio Code extension. So the board that I have is a STM32 F405 and I'll show you how we can set that up based off of some examples of other boards that are already present in the Zephyr project. Uh, in addition, I will go through a little bit about the upload and debugging side of things as well. So to start off, as I said, it's a STM32 F405. I have a workspace set up with the Zephyr installed. And so if I just go to external Zephyr boards and ARM, here are a list of some boards that already exist. So I want to start off with the board that is close to the one that I have. And I think maybe I'll try a Nucleo F401. So let's just scroll down to a Nucleo F401 RE. So I'll just copy this. I'll also now need to make a board directory in my workspace root. So new folder board. And inside here, I'll need to add another folder called ARM. And in here, I can now paste my F401. I'll just make sure that's right. Sorry, it should be boards, plural. Okay. So the next thing I would do is just start renaming things. So I will call this um, dev underscore F405. That'll be the name of this board. I'll just delete this doc folder since I don't plan on using it. I'll also be, I'm not planning on using OpenOCD, so I'll probably just delete the support folder as well. I'll get rid of this Arduino connectors and I'll get rid of this ST Morpho connectors as well. So now we have a fairly basic uh, folder here. We can just start by renaming some of these files to the name of the board. So that Nucleo underscore F401 changes to dev underscore F405. Okay. And then we'll just go through each of these files. So we'll start with the board.cmake. So this one here, we have our board runners and the first thing I want to do is, I'm actually going to program this using DFU util. So let's uh, figure out how to do that. I know the black pill actually uses DFU util, so maybe I'll just look at what that board is doing and try to copy from there. So we'll go to Zephyr. Uh, let's go to boards, arm, and where's black pill? We'll try this black pill F401 and we'll go into the CMake file there. And we just need to copy this line right here and this include right here to include DFU util. And I'll get rid of this uh, J link. So probably for this J link, I need to set this correct as well. STM32 F405 RG is what mine is. Hopefully that's correct. I'm not planning on using J link, so I'm not planning on testing it. And I'll get rid of this open OCD since I'm not going to use that. Okay, so then we go to the next page here. Okay, so we have this dev underscore F405 underscore def config file. Uh, so this one here, we have this series config, that's uh, probably correct. And this one we have an STM32F401XE. So mine is an F405RG, so I'll put a 5. The X will probably stay the same and change this to uh, G, F405XG. Now, how can I get this? Uh, let me just open up another one of these files. If I open up the... the kconfig.board file, I think I have, let me just go look in this file here, I'm in external Zephyr SOC arm st underscore stm32, stm32f4, kconfig.soc. So inside here we have 
the different options. So we do have an F405 XG, so that seems good. Uh, so that's selected. Uh, let's see. Okay, oh, we'll leave the DTS file for last. Let's go to this YAML file. Okay, we need an identifier. So dev underscore F405, and we'll call it custom F405 board. I can probably remove a bunch of these, and let's just leave it at like that for now. Uh, should probably update the RAM and flash size as well. Let's just keep going. So now we have to config the name of this board. So this previously was a Nucleo F401, so we'll call this a dev underscore F405. 405. And then back to this SOC, which was a 405. XG and we'll put down here um, STM 32 F405 development board. Okay, and now this here should get this new name and default F405. RG. Okay, so now let's try the DTS file. So we'll start off by changing this to an F405 RG. Uh, this line here, I'm not sure what all, what's the correct one. So let's just go have a look. So we'll go into external modules, HAL, STM32, DTS, ST, F4, and we have an F405 RGTX is what we're looking for. So we'll try that one here. Oops, I am lost the start of that. There we go. I'll delete these two right here, and there we go. Now we have this ST Microelectronics. What's the name of this our model? We don't. Uh, we'll just call it Dev F four hundred five. The compatible flag. It's not. We'll just leave it as is right now. Um, and what else do we need to change here? The main section we need to focus on next is the clocks. So low speed internal is okay. High speed external is HSC bypass. We don't want that because we are using a um, crystal. Uh, the clock frequency is eight megahertz. That's correct. And now the PLL. So let's see what we have set up here. Um, so eight is the M value um, multiplied by the N value of 336. And the P is 2, and the Q is 7. The source of the RCC is the PLL. As we can see here, the source of the rest of this is from the PLL. And the AHB scalar, prescalar is 1, APB1 prescalar is 4, and APB2 is 2. So 1, 4, and 2. So 1 and this is four, and this is two. And the clock frequency is 168 megahertz. Okay. Okay, so the demonstration that I wanna do is actually with the USB to serial uh, project. So I'll start with that. If we go to, I'm not sure if it's right now available as a project that I can quickly add. Let's see, uh, it's not. So I'm just going to copy the sample project from the Zephyr directory. Uh, let's go to Zephyr, samples, and subsystems, USB, CDC, ACM is the one I would like to do. I'll copy this folder. Let's go back to the main folder and paste it in here. So I've added CDC arm in here. The next thing that I want to do is go into the Zephyr IDE, keep going back here, 
but I can add the projects from here because I moved this panel over. Add project, CDC ACM, select. Okay, so now we can add a build. So here's the new boards directory that we just made and we'll use a dev F405 as the board and I'm just gonna call it build and we'll build it for debug and there we go. So I think this won't work, but we'll try it out. Okay, it didn't work. And let's just see what the error is. Um, device tree error, undefined node label Zephyr UDC zero. So that's because we based it off a of Nucleo F401, which doesn't expose the USB port. So I think we should go back to the Black Pill project and have a look at how they've done it in there. So we'll go back to external, Zephyr, boards, arm, scroll down to any of these black pill ones, and let's look inside the DTS file and the def config file. Uh, do we need anything in here? It doesn't look like there's anything USB related. So let's look inside the DTS file for a black pill, and I'll just do a quick search for USB. Okay. So we've got this device here that we need to define. So I'll just copy that, go into the def F405 file and paste it in there. So now let's uh, try building this again. Okay, the build has finished. So before we start that, let me just open up a serial console. And I've got another extension installed that allows me to view serial port. Just go here, secondary sidebar. So right now I have no ports available. So I am flashing this via DFU. So uh, I will go ahead and add a runner and select DFU util. Okay, and now let's press flash. Reset your board to switch to DFU mode. So I'll do that. Okay, and look, there it is. That COM10 serial port is now available. I'll press start monitoring and we can write something. Hello world. So this is the message that I've sent and here is the response, hello world. And so that's how you can set up a new board. So of course for your project you may have a bunch of other things you need to change, change these pin definitions to the correct uh, pins that are being used. Uh, you'll probably have different clock rates and things like that. If we were to just bring this back to the Zephyr IDE tab, put that here and get rid of this extension setup. Okay, so the other thing we have here is this uh, active build section. So I've got build pristine, build, flash. So these commands will all work. So example, if I want to reflash the board, I can press that. It's now asking me to go into DFU mode and it's in. And I also have these debug uh, options as well. So I don't have a probe plugged in, but I'll just give a demonstration of how this would work. Uh, if I press debug, I right now get an error, launch configuration, Zephyr IDE, debug not found. So we need to add this launch configurations in the launch.json file. So let's go ahead into here, VS code, and there is no launch.json. So we can also go to run and debug, and here we can create a launch.json file. There's a few different options here. There's Zephyr IDE. So the Zephyr IDE 
uh, does provide some debug configurations, but it utilizes Cortex debug. So you'll need to install Cortex debug for these uh, predefined uh, targets to work. So the two default ones are the Zephyr IDE debug and the Zephyr IDE attach. And you can see both of them use the Cortex debug. So you'll have to look up a tutorial on the Cortex debug to figure out how to get that to work correctly. And uh, in this case here, like it's set up for a black magic probe. Uh, where is it? Black magic probe. Server type is BMP. What the Zephyr IDE extension does provide for you is it does provide these commands to help you develop these uh, debug configurations. So we have this get GDB path. So when Cortex debug is asking for the GDB path, we can call this command and get it. The executable. So it also provides the Zephyr IDE get active build path. So this will show you whatever is right now set in the active build. So right now it would be CDC ACM build is what's going to be replaced right here. And then we have the Zephyr slash Zephyr.elf. So in addition, there's another templated uh, launch configuration we can use. I'll press add configuration here. And we have the Zephyr IDE debug select. So this launch configuration will actually prompt us for a project and build that we should debug for. Let's just go ahead and run it. Here it is asking for what project and what build. And this is giving us an error because we don't have a black magic probe plugged in. So you can design whatever launch configurations you like with whatever debugger extension that you have. Uh, the nice thing that the Zephyr IDE extension provides from you is these uh, options of being able to select an active build or getting the active build. So that's a brief overview of uh, defining a board, building, and debugging with the Zephyr IDE for VS Code extension. Thank you for watching.